So, uh, in the last lecture, if you remember, we left at this expression of rasa and the difference between actually being emotional and acting emotionally, because both situations require the cognition and emotional interplay. But when you are getting really emotional, there are autonomic changes the, in your heart and involuntary systems happen, whereas while you are acting, you may still control them. So, there is a possibility that both cognition and emotion create another dimension, one can control another, but and that is how we live, that is what life is all about. But why does it happen? On the surface, all this may be happening to make you achieve, move forward and do lot of things in the world, but the baseline, the brain does not bother about it too much actually, if you look at it. Because obviously, it is not the same, somebody living in a village or in, in a primitive African society and somebody living in uh, doing some artificial intelligence uh, research in say Stanford or MIT or even in IITs and ISCs, uh, that high highly complex uh, cosmology or quantum physics or genetics. Obviously, the, the level of complexity of thought is different, but the basic process which the brain knows and why does it have to play every time, every minute in fact, is uh, possibly the need to survive. And that is the basic need. If you survive and that is why your basic networks are all about survival, your food, your security and uh, we will talk about Maslow's needs. It has some biological underpinnings also. The basic push of the brain is survival and it has managed through these three, four tools as we talked about it. But if you look at it the whole thing from a different angle, what is the purpose of all this? Once you have survived, you have got food and your basic needs are uh, taken care of, what is the brain actually doing? Just imagine, if you are sitting under an open sky, all your basic needs are being taken care of and you are alone, you are not socializing, you are not, uh, you do not have gadgets obviously, your mobiles and your <coughs> iPads and your computers, what would you be doing? you would be doing what the caveman did. You know, these are paintings from cave 40,000 year old. They are few found in southwest France and few in near Bhopal in Bhim Petika. Actually, what they were doing, maybe they did not have language at that time, we are not sure, but they knew the language of painting. So, they were weaving stories. Look at this painting and try to just, this is a 40,000 year old painting. What does it tell you? There are human beings, there are children who are playing, there are animals, there is a person who is trying to shoot, maybe hunting food and then there are other rituals. They wanted to leave this story behind. So, your brain since ages is still doing the same. We are generally mucking around making stories. Now, some of these stories died, some of these stories survived, some of them were turned to religion, some of them to science, some of them all that is a human drama. The religion, the God, it, they are all stories which have come up from your brain. And why does it do it? You look into the why and how of it. And that is how imagination developed, that is how a part of cognition developed. Emotions were already there. 
So, this was a balance between emotion, emotional expression and the meaning given to it. As I said, Freud said rationalizing, totally ill directed emotion without a meaning to it, how long can brain sustain or how long people will understand. So, there was always a need for the brain to create meaning and in fact, we will talk about it. And so, what is what is the universal thing behind it? Where does it come from? If you go back to whatever time when life originated and uh, they would at some point of time somewhere maybe deep down to the sea, the first gene would have appeared and that gene would have been very intelligent enough. What is the need of that gene? The, what is the need of gene to keep producing, reproducing human beings and uh, other species? They just wanted to propagate a species, whatever species it is. So, the first gene probably learnt that to survive, a you know, small thing amidst the tsunamis and uh, lightnings and waves and mechanical forces, the first gene would have realized that the best way to survive is to multiply. You multiply, you become many and then nothing is going to destroy as we are, nothing is going to destroy total humanity yet. Although we do not know because some people the doomsday they predictors say that uh, there is a very limited time which you have and even Hawking Stephen Hawking recently said that we have 100 years unless we find home somewhere else. So, that was the first gene and then as genes multiplied and created bodies the complexity grew. The complexity is not necessarily being complicated, but the complexity is about the new dimensions which come in and then came in neurons, the nerve cells, the fiber like structures which uh, connect to each other through electricity and uh, chemistry. We all know about neurotransmitters, I will not go into it, but some of you if you want to really go into the bit of neuroscience can refer to the NPTEL lectures which are there. Uh, one of them was given by me, it is called a beautiful mind and there was a series of how the brain creates mind uh, MOOC course uh, two semesters back. Maybe you can find some of them on the internet, uh, YouTube. So, neurons are fibers which are connected at both ends to at least 2 or 3 of them and make a 10 to the power 11 neurons made a, make a huge complexity. So, neurons once they, once they came in and they got activated with birth electrochemically, they only shut off with death, they keep active all their life. Whether they are firing to create emotion, whether they are firing uh, together to uh, create a um, thought or action or anything, they, but they are always in the state of readiness to fire. So, the first neuron what they learnt, like gene learnt to multiply, the neuron learnt to talk. A neuron which is in isolation is not communicating is not a neuron. So, their whole need was to communicate and that communication grew in complexity with species after species and till within our head. What, what do they do by communicating? They are like sentinels, they are continuously sending messages to the inner chamber all to adapt in life and transmit that information. What they are doing is taking information through the five senses sending it to the brain, presenting it to the higher thinking brain and essentially for adaptation to life. In the process, they alter genes for a better adaptability. So, whatever uh, if you go to Darwin's theory, survival of the fittest and adapt, adaptation and mutation and gene, genetic whatever has gone in is actually the behavior, the behavior does not get transmit. But with the behavior, if you survive 
and you adapt better to the environment, then that you keep practicing that and your neurons ultimately transmit that to the genes. I hope you got it. They keep talking to each other, taking information through your senses, modulating it, presenting some meaning to the brain and that is what brain does. Just So, these are like you can see this is from the top of the brain and this is how the whole bunch of neurons 10 to the power 11 they are responding. They are complex. So, what is the understanding? They are parallel processing as I said that there are at a given instance each area of brain is doing its specialized job in modules, but right from modules as they go up there are hierarchical networks through all through the electrochemical signaling and this hierarchical networks create a complex emergent meaning. You call it consciousness or you call it a story or meaning that is a, is a matter of preference and the way you look at it. So, what I simply mean to say let me explain it to it just look at it the, and the, so whatever goes into the brain suppose uh, you see a structure it goes from the vision and you are also hearing at the same time. So, two pathways will take off that information turn it into uh, that energy of whatever um, a photon and here a mechanical pressure from the ear they go into their pathways the data goes into a center coordination center called thalamus from thalamus they are sent to their specialized area of hearing and vision, but at the same time the whole data is being compared within the brain in the deeper structure in the limbic system with thalamus with the existing memory comparing whatever is going on in your head right now with that making a composite image auditory or visual send it to the higher brain where the higher centers give meaning to it and then decide whether to act on it or to just keep it at a thought level or allow it to pass off. But from that basic unit which goes into through your senses that basic information which goes through the electrochemical as it the image is reformed as it is pushed to the, the center the deeper part and as it goes to the higher the complexity increases. So, there may be 10 points which are bringing information they coalesce into I am just hypothetically thing do not do not take it into uh, total literal meaning I am just trying to explain the 10 points of information are coming to form an image a image is formed that image is compared with the existing image another complex image is formed and that complex image is. So, as it goes in the hierarchical network the complexity increases and it expands from bits of data points they coalesce to make one image and then another image and the higher brain is just giving it a meaning. But in the process of giving meaning in the limbic system in the deeper thing there is always an emotional layer which comes from memory. Memory of what? If there is a suppose this you see it goes and it is displayed like this, this this induces fear it goes like this you see all this you can connect it. Now, the question is that whatever data is going whatever data is actually going into the um, brain is getting emotional layering even before it reaches the higher center where it can be put into cognitive process of thinking of abstraction of judgment of problem solving. But the emotional layering your rational thought is always laced with the emotion and that is a union of two they do not exist separately and that is what exactly we were talking about. This lacing of emotion, so this is a simple metaphor it is taken from bars. Uh, so, there is a conscious brain knows only the bright spot on the stage is conscious. So, that means 
Freud is almost coming back to life because initially the cognitive psychology and everybody thought that uh, unconscious is uh, nonsense and it is not happening. But now when we look at it, neuroscience and the models which are explaining it, we are finding that most of the brain is actually acting unconsciously and the conscious brain sees only what the unconscious brain is tending to it. Because when the information comes it, in the process of comparing it with memory and uh, emotional layering, some of it may be rejected and the image may be laced with uh, some other inputs. So, what you see corresponds to reality, but not exactly. Sensory inputs compete for access to conscious like hearing, like uh, touch, like vision and this is a working memory, this is a working memory. All other features including long term memory, the automatic process of language and events going are on the backstage. So, this is the backstage which is the unconscious. So, when you when I am talking, I there is a part of me which may be looking at what I am talking, but that that may be consciousness, but the language, the words I may have decided to speak in English, but the words are forming automatically. Otherwise, if I think and I stop, I mean it will take 100 lectures to complete it. So, the brain is already trained with this knowledge which I have. My brain has composed a story which will last till 10 lectures, aiming towards whatever I wanted to tell you. And in the process, it is creating itself. And the conscious mind sees the frame which is presented to it, a frame of reality presented to it by the unconscious mind. So, it knows only that frame, whether it can go back in a feedback loop and really alter that is a later part of this series. So, this is again from bars. If you look at it, there is a sensory input here. What is the point where this whole process is controlled? And that point is like an inner camera, which is the attentional mechanism. That is a bottleneck. Attention mechanism can hold certain things at a certain point of time. Now, imagine there are external inputs which are coming all the time, which you should respond to, otherwise you will not survive. Suppose there is a lion here and you are lost in your own poetry you will not be there in the next moment to have any poetry at all. So, the brain has to actually respond to the external reality, but the internal reality is also going on. You may suddenly see a line and remember a story from childhood. So, what does the brain do? The conscious brain has to suppress the need of this internal push. If the external and the internal are the same, if external imagery and internal imagery is the same wonderful, but if internal imagery is going in some other direction and external is going in some other direction, the emotional center will have to decide the threat value of this. If there is no threat you are free you can your mind can think about everything, but if there is a threat the brain will always respond to this external thing for as I said survival. In that case the conscious brain will suppress this internal imagery. So, this whole dynamics of external internal is going on all the time, all the time even when while you are sleeping you are doing this. Do not you see dreams? So, that is what I am saying that the brain all the time is taking from vision, hearing, touch then there is a central executive which is a conscious event, then there is a and the background of this is stored memory, knowledge and skill which is all compared with this and then there is a top down voluntary action, action planning, response output which is the behavior. So, it goes in, gets processed compared with the internal stored memory, laced with emotion, assessed on a hierarchical value, thrown to the conscious brain, the conscious brain evaluates it, gives it a meaning. Through the meaning, it decides whether it wants to act, act on it or it just wants to ignore the whole thing and move on or give a feedback loop and suppress it. The conscious brain also suppresses the internal 
push to express depending on the emotional state. If it is a happy time, you can still have your internal poetry and you can meet somebody and you can say that, okay, fine, your face looks like a flower. And that is a peace time. The brain has evaluated that there is no problem, you can say all this. But you cannot say, sit with a lion and say, oh, king of jungle, let us talk. The brain will know, boss, you have to run. So, that is what brain is doing. It is creating stories. So, if you look at it, whether it is happening in animals also, they are also aware, they are also perceiving the thing. Whether they are giving a meaning or weaving a story, we do not know, because that is something which uh, we have not been able to check. So, actually the brain is aware of a very small fraction of what these faculties are doing. Your brain is continuously active. If while you are sleeping, your brain is still making stories in the dream. Dreams are just information processing, whatever has gone into your head, what you have not been able to logically bring to a conclusive end, your brain keeps making stories out of that. But all these changes are happening continually and responding to demands made by the current environment. So, what is the truth? The truth is that if something goes into your head, okay, you will not become, this is a famous experience, uh, experiment of Libé, where he said that even while you decide, your decision has been taken in the unconscious mind at least 200 milliseconds before. So, if I decide to move this hand, 200 millisecond before the brain would have already decided. But whatever is going undergoing in the unconscious mind, all this reformation of image, emotional layering, comparing it with memory, presenting a composite image, you become conscious only after four, this is 400 millisecond, but let us say somewhere between 300 to 500 milliseconds roughly. So, the reality what you see is being presented to the conscious brain in frames of 500 milliseconds at max. Less than that, like suppose you touch fire and you even before you can think you have removed, that is reflex action. So, brain has in evolution very intelligently kept away few things under its control. It does not ask you whether you want to remove your hand from the fire or not. It will first remove it. It will first remove the whole thing because that is for survival. Then you can get it to the 500 milliseconds. So, so what is what you are having is actually if you look at it, you are having snapshots 500 milliseconds. Imagine if you are just living in this 500 millisecond snapshot, what would life be? It has no meaning. So, the brain weaves a meaning and a story out of it, which it sends to feedback to the brain, to the deeper structure through behavior, through thought and probably modifies it, probably modifies the whole thing. But this is the reality in which you are living in short time, today, in an hour, in a day and all. So, it weaves a story, fine. Well, what happens? You, you have so many stories, you are like, I am a doctor and I am a I am teaching you, I am sharing this course with you, then I will go in the evening and meet my friend. So, that, that story will be different from this story. My work as a doctor will differ uh, in a different way. Somebody who is recording me here has a different frame of reality, but once he finishes this work, he will have, so there are so many stories. Where is the link then? The link is in the self because then there is not one story, there are two stories. One story is a immediate story of survival in the situation, taking in whatever goes and actually adapting to the environment. But this I guess is on the background of, so this is, we have come from our nearest cousin chimpanzee and this is me, we both are same. We both are aware of our environment. But what is the, there is some difference between 
me and him. He may be better adjusted. I am not saying that I am better adjusted. I may have my own share of anxieties, but the person who is better adjusted may be my cousin chimpanzee. But look at it, he is also aware, but what differentiate me from him? And when I am saying me, I am maybe representing whole humanity. We have a self referentiality, we have a unity in whatever roles we are playing. So, even if I move into 10 situations within next 2 days, I will still be myself. That is the self, self reflective and I may be thinking what I have done, what I have spoken. That is what I was saying, even when I am talking to you, there is a self in me. Remember this self, this conscious self which is looking at me while I am talking to you and intent. I think I have a control over my will. I may decide to say this or not do even if it is coming from my unconscious brain and I do not have a free will, I may not have a free will, but I still may have to have a will and that differentiates homo sapiens from others. So, the brain is weaving two stories. One is the story of self which goes on in the background right from my birth till my death it will keep weaving that self and this self has been formed in the initial one or two decades of my life and my self does not contain only me, it contains my parents, my friends, my experiences, my religion, my mythology, everything has gone into me weaving a and then my thought process, then my cognition, knowledge I have gained, I have modified lot of things. So, the whole thing is like a one self. This one self has another short stories coming every now and then in the anecdotes, in the interactions, in the, uh, the, the, the way I move in the world. So, actually, so, so there is a world in which the self is going and over this self this. So, these three stories are entwined into one and that is the meaning of life. So, the conscious brain with the poor conscious brain may actually not be doing anything else, but trying to give meaning to what you are going. Now, this whole meaning of self has not emerged in isolation. As I said, the lot of inputs from society and everything has really gone into it and uh, brain over evolution has probably has probably caught on to uh, this process because that is the best suited process. You have to survive with people. So, man is a social being actually may not be a very a sociological and political statement. It may actually be a biological statement if you ask me. So, you are you have to move in this world, give meaning to it, you do not want sporadic things hunting your brain and you want to relate to other people. So, this meaning giving exercise whether this meaning itself can over time alter the your unconscious, the process of it is what we will look at towards the end of this series and when we talk of transformation because without it, it cannot happen and that is the problem why if you go to the basic question that why do not people seem to improve. Maybe this whole process itself has never been examined. We will try to examine this in lecture in a fresh angle. So, I will see you in the next lecture continue on this process of story making and see how we place ourselves. Thank you.